Hey guys, Trevor Sullivan here again, and I just wanted to provide a quick update to the video that I put out yesterday. Uh, so yesterday was Friday, I think that was, yeah, February 25th, and I took the Certified Kubernetes Administrator, or CKA, exam from the Linux Foundation, since I am building out a bunch of Kubernetes CKA-focused training content at CBT Nuggets. And I didn't necessarily go into it thinking that I was going to pass it. My primary objective was really just to kind of understand how the exam is structured and what kind of questions and topics are being covered on that exam. But almost 24 hours later, about 20, 21-ish, maybe 20 hours later, um, they finally sent me an email. I had totally just forgotten about it. I was just kind of busy cleaning the house today and they sent me an email saying that I passed. So I'm excited to announce that I did actually pass the CKA exam. Uh, this is the first time that I've ever you know, taken or passed any exams similar to the CKA or you know, anything really Kubernetes related. Um, it's been kind of an interesting learning experience for me as I've gone through and learned about Kubernetes and the different constructs that it has. So my advice to you is that if you want to get a passing score on this exam, then make sure that you spend adequate time uh, kind of hands-on with Kubernetes. Don't go into it uh, just with purely conceptual knowledge because you're most likely not going to pass if you just go in there kind of reviewing the high-level concepts and uh, thinking that maybe you know enough about how clusters work at a high level to be able to go in and pass. You really, really need to understand how Kubernetes manifests work. You need to understand the kubectl command line utility. You need to understand how load balancing works and services and deployment controllers and replica sets and all those core constructs in a Kubernetes cluster that really control the deployment of applications. RBAC is something, a role-based access control is something you're really going to want to know as well. If you don't know how those um, cluster roles and cluster role bindings and roles and role bindings work and things like that, then uh, you're probably going to struggle on those types of topics, especially when it comes to controlling access to API groups and um, uh, different resources within the cluster and which operations you're, you're allowing somebody to perform within that cluster. Uh, something that I wish I had actually studied a bit more ahead of time was some of the more advanced kubectl features. So when you're using the kubectl command line utility, you can actually uh, filter for uh, different types of resources. So you can filter nodes based on taints, for example. You can filter pods based on uh, like labels, I think. Um, so there's a bunch of different ways to, you know, filter resources and even in some cases sort the results that you're getting back from the kubectl utility. And so I wish I had spent a little bit more time understanding that. Um, it didn't apparently cost me the passing score because I did actually get uh, the CKA exam um, badge and, and certification. But, uh, you know, definitely having a little bit more intimate knowledge about some of the kind of fringe features of the kubectl command line utility would be uh, extremely helpful. So in any case, if you're in the middle of studying for CKA, then make sure that you are getting good hands-on time with kubectl. Make sure that you are understanding load balancers in the cloud. Make sure that you're understanding how, um, you know, deployments work so that you can roll out different versions of applications with replica sets and uh, make sure that you understand how to construct manifests as well. So understand API groups, understand the API resources and the different schemas, or they sometimes call them specs, that you can define on your Kubernetes objects and then deploy those out. So in any case, I wish you the best of luck in your experience taking the CKA exam. Make sure you get some hands-on time, really exercise those different features of the platform and kind of stretch your understanding of the platform so that you have the best chance of success at the CKA exam and any other Kubernetes exams that you may be taking. Take care.